Hello and welcome to the channel. Now, so far in this series, we've talked at length about subzones. So today we're going to start talking about zones. Now, remember zones, unlike subzones, zones are for connecting into and out of your expressway. Okay, and there are several different types of zones that we can create here. So for example, we can create a neighbor zone. Now, neighbor zones are used to connect like devices. So for example, we have this expressway here with all its uh, default settings. And then let's say you had another expressway in a completely different physical location. Let's say this one's in Kobe and this one over here was in Dallas in the US. Then I could have a neighbor zone to connect these two locations across a WAN. Okay, but what if I'm not going across a WAN? What if I'm just going in and out of my firewall? I could do a different kind of zone for that. Uh, what I could do is, uh, let's say this is my expressway core on the inside of my network, and then over here I could put an expressway edge on the outside of my network, and then I could build what's called a traversal client zone on the expressway core, and then a traversal server zone on the expressway edge, and then they can establish a connection through the firewall. Another zone I could configure is a DNS zone, and uh, DNS can be used for several things, but most commonly DNS here is used for establishing connections out to other companies. So this is your B2B or your B2C communication. There's also DNS enum zones, uh, but nobody really uses enum much anymore, so we're not really going to get too far into that. So these are just a few of the different types of zones that you can create. Uh, there's a few more, by the way. Uh, one in particular is Unified Communications. Now, this is used for MRA. Now, I've gotten a lot of requests for MRA, so I'm going to save that for later so that we can go a bit deeper into that one. So definitely stay tuned for that. And there's even one for WebEx, which, again, we'll save uh, for a later date. Uh, because today we're focusing on neighbor zones. Now, one important aspect to neighbor zones is that they're unidirectional, meaning that if I were to build a neighbor zone on my Kobe Expressway, as I have here, and then connect it to my Dallas Expressway, uh, calls can go from Kobe to Dallas, but they cannot go from Dallas back to Kobe. Uh, at least not until I build another neighbor zone and point it back to Kobe. Only then would calls be bi-directional. Okay, so connecting two expressways across a WAN like this, this is a, a pretty common scenario. You would also want to use a neighbor zone for connecting, say, CMS, Cisco Meeting Server. Uh, but another common scenario, uh, the, the one that I'm going to go ahead and demo for you today, is connecting an expressway to a CUCM, okay? Now on the CUCM side of things, since a CUCM doesn't have zones, what you'd have to do is build a SIP trunk and then point it back to the expressway. Now I'm not really going to demo how to create a SIP trunk here today because I I've shown that before in other videos. Uh, today we're just focusing on the expressway side of things. Okay, so let's log into our expressway and uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to configuration, zones, and zones. And then of course we'll click new here and for the name let's say uh, expressway c to cucm and then here you can choose the type of zone that you want to create uh, you can see we have several to choose from uh, again here's the one for unified communications i mentioned earlier which we'll use for mra uh, we'll definitely do that one later. Uh, and I mentioned that there's one for WebEx uh, earlier, but that's not listed here because I'm not on the latest version right now. But again, we'll, we'll circle back and do WebEx a little bit later as well. In any case, let's go ahead and select Neighbor Zone. Okay, now the CCM doesn't use uh, H323, so we're just going to come down here and turn that off. Okay, and for SIP, uh, we're just going to use the 5060 for the port and then TCP for the transport. Now the reason I'm changing these uh, here is simply because this is how the SIP trunk on my CCM is configured. Now I said I wasn't going to go into the CCM side of things, but it is, it is worth pointing out here. Uh, it'll take just a second. Uh, so I've got a SIP trunk security profile open in another tab here. Okay, So this is the CCM I'm trying to connect to. So down here, uh, you're going to have a setting for outgoing transport type. If that's set to TCP on your SIP trunk, you'll have to choose TCP for the transport setting on your expressway. Okay, And for the incoming port, 
If that's set to 5060 on your SIP trunk, you'll need to make it 5060 on the port setting on your expressway as well, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, those two values need to match. Everything else under SIP here, we can leave that the way it is. Okay, and then for authentication policy, again, I always like to, at the very least, choose uh, treat as authenticated. And then here under location, uh, the address here is going to be the IP address of your CCM. At least in my case, that's going to be 198.18.133.3. Okay, and then down here under advanced, under zone profile, notice we have a couple of different versions of the CCM down here. And just choose the one that you have, of course. Uh, but honestly, you could probably select either one of these and it should still work. Okay, so we're going to click uh, create zone. And then here's our zone here, expressway C to CCM. And I can see it's a neighbor zone. And under status, I can see that it is active. Now here you're only going to see active for the SIP status if you've successfully configured your SIP trunk on the CCM side. Otherwise it's going to say failed. Okay, So we're getting active, uh, that means we're all set except for one small thing. Now remember on a CCM if you create a SIP trunk you have to also create route patterns. So on an expressway of course we don't have route patterns so we have to create something called search rules. So for that we can just go right here and click search rules or you can go to configuration, dial plan, and then search rules. Either one will take you to the same place. Okay, and then once we're here, we can click new. And of course we need to give the rule a name. So we'll say uh, exp to CUCM rule, that'll work. And here for the protocol, we're gonna say SIP, cause uh, that's all we're using here is SIP. And then for the source, we'll say, uh, well, we'll keep that as any. Then down here on successful match, we'll choose stop. And uh, for the target, we'll say expressway to CCM. This is the zone that we just created, of course. And then we'll come down here and click create search rule. Okay, and then we're all set. We've created our first neighbor zone. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.